This is one really amazing story of Ibrahim salam, where basically the angels visited him and then he prepared this giant feast. But then angels don't eat. The angels left and now he's left with the giant feast and with his big heart. Ibrahim salam, actually had a very big heart and he just loved like hosting people. He loved like being hospitable. So he goes out and he's like, I want to host someone. I already have the feast. I'm going to go find a guest. The first person he finds is an old man, about 60 years old. And he says to him, I have this grand feast prepared. And it would be my honor if you were my guest today. Now, of course, who, who wouldn't be excited about this? The old man was like, okay, I accept the, your invitation. And then Ibrahim salam, he says, yeah, but I do have one condition. Since I am going to be your host, I just have one condition that I'd like you to uphold. The man says, okay, I mean, that sounds reasonable. What's your condition? He says, I want you to say, La ilaha illallah. Now the man, he hears this. Now he's not Muslim. And he becomes furious. He's like, are you going to change my religion over a piece of food? And he storms off and he leaves. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches out to Ibrahim alayhi salam and he says to him, Oh Ibrahim, I fed this man for 60 years. Never once did I demand that he say, La ilaha illallah. And you want to feed him one time and you want him to say la ilaha illallah? Go to him and apologize. So Ibrahim salam, he finds the man again and he tells him the story and he apologizes. To the man he says, Did your Lord say this about me? Then ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Ibrahim khalilullah which was the kalma of the time. I will bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah and Ibrahim is the best friend of Allah. Now what this story told me was that my personal approach to da'wah was completely wrong. Because a lot of da'wah that I was doing was focused on the singular goal of getting the person to say La ilaha illallah. But here, we find that the word La ilaha illallah did not convert this man. Rather, it was the love of Allah that caused this man to say La ilaha illallah. When he heard that story, he fell in love with Allah. This is a God-worthy portion. And he said La ilaha illallah. And so, I think personally that the objective of da'wah is to show Allah's love for that person. Is to make that person fall in love with Allah. And you know, I actually tried this at a wedding I went to. I actually spoke on the topic of love, which is very fitting for weddings. And I spoke about why we should love Allah. And one of the reasons that I gave was just reflect on the nature of love, in fact. You know, and when you reflect on its nature, you come to realize that where is this coming from? Very unnatural thing to have love. You know, it's like strangely enough, because you can't control who you love and you can't control how much you love and you can't control when you fall in love. It just happens. It's like a very foreign entity that just enters your heart all of a sudden without warning. And I said, from where is all this love coming from? Because we all know it and we all feel it and we all have relatives and, and, and relationships that we've experienced love for. So I said, where is this coming from? And I said, that if you really reflect on it, the only answer is Allah. Allah brings the hearts together. If you spend everything in the heavens and earth, you couldn't bring two hearts together. But rather, Allah can bring them together. Like that. So he said, the source of this love is Allah. But that means that Allah, all the love that has been experienced ever in the human existence and the animal existence and between every single person and their various relationships, the love between a mother and a child and a, a sibling and another sibling and a spouse and the, their spouse and their kids. All of that love is, is taking its origin from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means how much love does Allah have? How much love does Allah contain that He can distribute love like this willy-nilly and everyone can experience it? Not only this, but like the depth of love, right? That they can just go to infinite depths. Some people go crazy out of love. There, this not just a large quantity, but like a deep quality to love. So I said, if Allah has this much love, then how much love is He due? He's given us all of these different blessings. Relationships are like one of the greatest blessings. Then how much love is He due? And that was basically my, my talk. The majority of the, the wedding was actually non-Muslim. A lot of them, they came up to me like, that was really beautiful. First time I've heard about Islam, and I agree with everything you said, you know? And there were people, like one guy, for example, was actually on the flight back with me. And he was right next to me, just by coincidence. And we spoke about this the whole two hours on the flight, right? We were just talking about love and the nature of love and how to express our love for Allah. And dude, the da'wah was so easy. 
everything with this paradigm of love everything just fit into place so for example he was saying like you all love Allah how do we go from loving God to Islam right because that's like kind of a, a leap because a lot of people would say they love Allah and I was like dude when you really love someone you show your love in a way that would they would they would appreciate it. when I love my wife I want to give her and I give her breakfast in bed if she's allergic to peanuts and every single dish in that breakfast in bed has peanuts, dude, she's not gonna appreciate that. Cause she's like, how can you say you love me when you never even knew me? First step to actually expressing love at a deeper level for God is to get to know God, to know Allah. Only then you can actually say doing things that please Allah. I said, on the other hand, what is God's expression of love for us, right? We worship Allah in the way that he wants us to, but how does God express his love for us? And I was like, it's very similar to how a parent would, would speak with their child, right? That if they see their child as in distress and the child is, has problems, the parent like naturally is going to be like, dude, I have the solution to this problem. Here, just do this, this, and this, and you'll be fine. How could it be that a loving God that created all of this love, that sees us in so much distress that we're trying to figure out, okay, how can I worship God properly? How can I fix my problems in life, in my relationships? How could it be that Allah sees us with all these problems and He doesn't give us a solution for that? So I said, look, we have what we call the love letter from God. And that is the Qur'an. That God saw we have problems, He saw we have issues, He gave us all the answers. He said, here you go. Read it, fix your issues. And our love letter to God is that we read it and we follow it in the way that He loves. And so now this religion is not about rules and regulations and you know, all this stuff. Now this religion is something really beautiful. And oh, actually, he asked me to send him a copy of the Quran. And I sent a couple people in that event some Qurans. Inshallah, may Allah guide them. But you know, this was just like an opening for me because like this was a new da'wah that I've never done before. I've never done da'wah in this way. And most of the times, when I see people do da'wah, it's very dry. Argumentation. Your book is wrong. Logically, this must be the truth. Most people don't think their fundamental thought process is not logical. For most people, their fundamental thought process is emotional. I hope that helps. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.